Welcome to Jazz Time. Jazztime.com is an online store that buys, sells, trades authentic luxury watches. We make these videos so our customers can easily choose the best watch for themselves and the comfort of their own home. If you like this watch and would like to purchase it at the lowest price anywhere online, click on the link in the description below to buy it at Jazztime.com. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Tudor Black Bay Chrono Reference M79360N. Dash 0002 with a white dial chronograph. I'm going to talk to you about the case bezel dial bracelet movement. Finally, try it on and give you my thoughts. So let's start with the case. The case on this watch is 41 millimeters. Now, to give you a little bit of reference, Tudor is Rolex's younger, smaller brother, more affordable watch than the Rolex. At this watch retails at, at currently as of 24 around 5500 5500 and you can buy it for a little bit less than that at jazztime.com and if you don't live in the california you can get it with no tax too and there's no wait list okay but anyways the case itself is 41 millimeters now that's just a little bit bigger than the daytona which is his bigger brother the bigger brother the retail price of the rolex daytona is around 15,000, but on the gray market it trades for around thirty thousand dollars so that makes it what six times the price of this one and so you get the little brother for six times less the price at least uh, approximately okay now 41 millimeters is not a huge difference it is a little bit bigger obviously now you're going to see it when i try it on my wrist all right now what are some of the things i can point out about this case that are interesting well first is that you look at the polishing on it it's satin finish on the top of the watch why is that important well because it the top of the watch is the most scratchable area of the watch it's the part that most likely when you wear it is going to get scratches and putting it in satin finish just makes it ever more so that it those scratches are not as noticeable whereas on the for example the rolex daytona you would have it you, you know a scratch on the top would be easily visible what is really nice, which I think most people don't reckon or see right away, is that usually on a high-end watch, you have a beveled edge. And that's this edge right here where it's satin finish and then high polish. Really, not a lot of companies do this. Even Rolex doesn't really do it, except they except on some of their newer models, such as their uh, Yacht Master that the, and their Deep Sea that they just started doing on. But on a lot of their other ones, or I'd say like 99% of their other watches, they don't do a beveled edge but surprisingly the younger brother the much cheaper version of it does a beveled edge now the beveled edge is nice because just it's like a you know it's a, a fine detail on the case that really shows that the manufacturer paid some attention to it okay i know it's a small thing but for example Audemars Piguet does it Patek Philippe does it so a lot of and Rolex of course does it on some of their newer select models okay anyways that's the beveled edge now what else i can show you about this is look at the side of the case now if you look at the the thickness of it it's 14.4 millimeters in thickness now a daytona is around 12 millimeters so there's quite a bit thicker but it's not it's not like gargantuous or anything it's and the the watch itself being 41 millimeters normally you have a lug width of 40 when you have a lug width or when you have a case size of 40 millimeter you have a lug width of 20 millimeters in this situation they made the the bracelet at 22 millimeters so that it has the right proportions you can either go in my opinion you can go 21 or 22 22 just makes it look a little bit more beefy if you ask me and uh, i'll get to the reason why when i talk about the bracelet why they went with 22 as, as opposed to 21 at least in my opinion okay all right now that that's the case okay so very nice case now let's move on and oh by the way i should say that the k uh uh, Rolex makes their steel in 904L steel, which is the hardest steel, very hard to work with. Now, Tudor being the younger brother, they're not going to use the same quality as Rolex because, well, you're paying a lesser price, so they got to use lesser quality, right, as, as you could imagine. But it's not bad quality. They use 316L steel, which is actually the standard steel that other watch companies use, such as Omega, Patek Philippe. Um, I'm not sure what Audemars uses, actually. I want to say they probably use 904 or something similar. You know, actually, I'm not sure if, if uh, Patek uses 316 either, but I, I am sure that Omega does. So it does make sense uh, to use 316L for those similar those brands that are in the similar category, which is like Omega and Tudor. Okay, 
But anyways, they that's what they use. It's a little bit not as good as 904L steel, of course, but it's still very good. It's still a top uh, steel. And it's very hard. It's robust, and, uh, and and it does its job. Okay, that's the that's the case. Let's move on to the bezel here. Now the bezel is it has a steel black with matte black andonized aluminum disc. What that means is this little bezel insert here is made of aluminum as opposed to ceramic. Now, of course, ceramic is more expensive, it's better, etc. has a lot of other qualities, but of course, that watch is selling at 30,000. This watch is selling around 5,000. So it's hard to compare those, but uh, if you look at aluminum, it's been used in watches uh, as the bezel for a very long time. In fact, even Rolex used them uh, all the way up until I think uh, somewhere in the 2000s on their Submariners and, and other watches. Okay, any, anyways, the bezel is uh, it's a tachymetric scale, which allows you to calculate not elapsed time, but the speed of a car. Uh, exactly how to use it, I'm, to be honest, I don't really remember, and I don't think anyone really uses it for that, but it does look really cool. Okay, anyways, that's the bezel. It doesn't turn, but you can use it, and it looks nice. There you have it, and it's aluminum. That's pretty much what you need to remember. Okay, let's move on to the dial here. Now, I call this dial white. Tudor needs to make a fancy name. They call it opaline with black counters and a domed date at 6 o'clock. Okay, sure, fine. But basically, it's white. It's a white dial. Now, they make this uh, to the chronograph in many different variations. They even make it on a two-tone with a really funky, cool bracelet. If you, if you go to our website, you can see it. It's a leather bracelet that looks quite funky. But they also make it in black. They make it in white make some other variations of it with on strap on not strap which is is a kind of a cool thing if you if you think about it its older brother the rolex only produces the stainless steel in two variations black and white that's it no bezel combinations or dial or or sorry uh, bracelet combinations that's it black or white which one do you want and at least tudor they make it on different bracelets they do it on different colors different materials it's it's, it's pretty nice okay so that is the the dial and what else i can say about this dial before we move off from it is uh if you notice that it only has two sub counters right and on the on the daytona you have three because you have a running seconds here you you just have uh two sub su two sub dials which i think is pretty cool uh in that it doesn't make the dial very crowded Normally, the dial looks really crowded if you put three subdials. And the other thing is, for example, on a Daytona, there's actually no date. Surprisingly enough, you, for $30,000, you would think that they would provide a date. But in fact, the Daytona, being smaller watch at 40 millimeters, is very crowded. And you can't have a date because you have three subdials. In this situation, you do not have that. You, you actually have... The date at the bottom which is pretty handy because a lot of us can't remember what date today is in fact i can't remember is today the 20 21st 22nd i can't remember so having that date at the very bottom is quite helpful and it's a it's a unique place to put it usually it's uh not really there it's usually at three o'clock but because of the place of the counters they had to put it there okay anyways that uh, i think is pretty pretty interesting pretty nice okay all right and uh, you have a 45 minute counter here by the way it's, uh, it's also kind of unique you have a uh, I mean, you don't really see that very often, right? It's usually increments of 30 or 60, something like that. But here is a 45 minute. So on the right-hand side, that is pretty cool, right? Okay. And also what I was going to say is the hour markers are very big and legible. If you look at, for example, a Daytona, you have these very skinny uh, indexes. They look very beautiful, of course, but they're harder to read. But these huge snowflaked hands and big luminescent hour markers allows the watch to be very easily readable, especially at night. Okay. All right. Uh, so that's the, the dial and let's move on here to the bracelet. Now I'm going to tell, remember I told you at the beginning, I was going to tell you why I believe that the, they went with a 22 millimeter uh, bracelet size lug width. That means from lug to lug as opposed to 21. Cause usually at 40 millimeters is 20, 41 is 21, 42 and above is 22. Why did they go with 22? Well, interestingly, which I think is really cool, one of the reasons you might actually want to go with this watch is the bracelet. What about this bracelet? It's a riveted steel bracelet. What does that mean? You look at the size of the bracelet. It actually has rivets 
on it. Now you might wonder why is that? Well, the rivets hold the, the bracelet together. That's an old school way of doing it. In fact, that's how Rolex did it a very long time ago on their earlier sports watches. The rivets, no, they no longer use that because it's not a, as a, uh, effective. They used a better method by screws, but the old school method of rivets was what they used to use. Kind of like building a bridge or building a you know, a building, you put these rivets on the side of it so that it holds the piece together, which is very interesting and it very makes it look very, it's a nod to the, to the vintage look. But why 22 millimeters? Well, when you have these rivets, it makes the bracelet stick out. Now, if you didn't make the lug with 22 millimeters, then these rivets would actually stick past the lug points and it actually looked funny. So what you have to do is you have to increase the lug width to 422 to accommodate the bracelet and so that when you put on the rivets and you include the rivets that it'll be flush i hope that makes sense if it doesn't just rewind and listen to it again and you'll see that it had to do that because the rivets take up space and without that it would just not look symmetrical it would it would actually uh be asymmetric okay so and I think it's a very nice way. To, it's a very smart way to do it. Okay. And it also makes the watch look very beefy, chunky, sporty, which this watch is supposed to be. That's the whole purpose of a steel chronograph uh, watch is that it's sporty. So it's okay for the watch to be a little bit chunky. Okay. That's the bracelet. Now let's move on to the movement. Now, interestingly, the power reserve on this manufacturer caliber MT5813 is not only COSC certified, which means it's, they certify it for uh, its precision on time, but it also has a power reserve of 70 hours. Now you might be wondering, well, what's the big deal? Well, 70 hours has now become the standard. And before, I would say like more than 10 years ago, even Rolex was not making power reserves of 70 hours. Their, their most famous movement, which is a 3135 that was used on every day chest and uh, sports watch, was only a 48 hour power reserve. That's up to 10 years ago. So Tudor, its little brother, is producing a watch with a 70-hour power reserve that has a COSC cert, just like its big brother, the Daytona, which is, you know, six times the price, has the same power reserve and it still meets the same qualifications of the COSC cert. Of course, it doesn't look as beautiful, the movement, but it's not six times the price. It's still performing just as well as a Daytona. I mean, it's incredible. It really and especially at, given its price point. So you can see why a lot of people are going with two doors because they're very beautiful watches. They're they're highly accurate. They're made by a very good company, i.e. Rolex's little brother. Well, actually, it's, two doors owned by Rolex. So uh, you, it's just like kind of like Toyota and, and Lexus. So you can see why a lot of people are going with this watch. All right. And it doesn't break the bank. That's the main thing. Okay, look, not time for me to try it on and give you my thoughts. Now I'm six foot tall, 200 pounds. I have a 7.5 inch wrist. And as you can imagine, since I've been telling you about this watch, I really do like it. I think it's a great watch for its price. Now, I'm not saying, oh, you know, compare it to an Audemars Piguet, it's going to beat it, or a Daytona, it's better. No, I'm saying for its price. This watch is around the $5,000 range. What kind of person would want to wear this? Well, let's say you just got started into your watch, uh, you know, watch collecting, and and or this is your budget, you know. And there's nothing wrong with a $5,000 budget. It's still a lot of money, you know. You got to work. That, that's a lot of dollars. I mean, it's not insane money, but it's still quite a bit of money. So it's a great watch for those who be, people who want to have a luxury watch, a, a starting luxury watch. It's at the very beginning, very lowest end of, of watch collecting, but it's still a Swiss luxury watch. You know, it's not no $500 fashion watch. So at any rate, I really like the watch. I think it looks, and it's going to last you a long time, by the way. It, the two-door is, is uh, it's known for its reliability. It holds pretty good resale. I'm going to say Rolex resale, obviously, but it holds pretty good resale. Okay, so for those reasons, if you'd like to buy it, please click on the link in the description below to buy it at jazztime.com. If you want to find out more about the watch you just saw in the video, you can just click below on show more to see the full description. Then you can check the link next to model as seen in video, click on it and you will get to the proper page where you can see all the details. If you're watching on a mobile phone, you have to click on the arrow down on the right hand side below the video to see the full description. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. 
If you would like to share this video with your friends, you can use the share button below and share it on any platform you like. If you have questions, constructive feedback, want to tell us about some mistakes or misspeaks, just write a comment below. If you want to see more videos like this, you should subscribe to our channel and visit our channel page where you can find all the videos. And if you're interested in a specific watch brand, you can check out our playlists. If you want to check the price for a watch or want to buy one, remember at jazztime.com you always get a steep discount. So you should check the prices with us. If you want to know the price for a specific watch, just go to Google, type in Jazz Time plus the brand, model and the details you're interested in and Google will find the right page for you. Thank you for watching.